I said, yeah, you're old. I was like 24. Well, now I've doubled that and then some. But you still train with the weights as well? Oh, yeah. Look, I'm, no, I'm not asking because I can't see, because I can see them. No, but I want no, people no, to no, know. No, it's a, it's a valid question. I, look, I started weight training again when I was probably 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. I was so skinny and so small as a, as a, you know, just into my teens. Mm -hmm. I used to read the Weeder magazines back then and look at people like Boyako and all those back in the sure. day. And, and all I ever wanted to do was get some semblance of muscle on me. Right. This is the reason when I started karate, I liked it better than judo because I used to read in judo the ads on the back of comic books, you know, one finger you can do of this course. and that. And we found out that wasn't quite that true. That doesn't work too I well. I was like a cartoon character getting brown belt used to spin me up and down the dojo. And uh, so I like karate. But the point being that what weight training came became for me when I got into martial arts was a supplement to my martial arts training. And still today, if I don't get my three workouts at least a week, right. I just don't feel the same power, I just don't feel the same strength. And you know, in the days when I did weight training, oh, it'll slow you down, you become this, you become that. You know, and what a crock that is. That was always yeah. from people who'd never actually done it. I remember reading about uh, uh, Vasilev, you know, Russian power lifter. I remember way him, back. sure. And reading that he, over a, say, a, a 30 yard dash, very short, you know, maybe not even that long, he was as fast as some of the best sprinters in the world because of the fast twitch fiber, you know? Exactly. The plyometric effect of weight training. And, you know, that's what we do in martial arts. It's how we get from a negative to a positive and put power into it. The quads are strong, you know? The glutes are strong. You've got a good core. Exactly. What better than weight training to give you that? And, you know, that's what it does. Fantastic. But yeah. how about your diet? You you follow a pretty good diet? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty... You know, I used to be fanatical with diet. When I was in my teens and even 20s I would fast one day a week I only ever ate six days a week to take a 24-hour fast nothing but honey apple cider vinegar and a little bit of um, and water and that just as, sure. a, as a toxic dissolver right and uh, I, I would do three fasts a year that involved 10 days of just having distilled water this is this is That's way tough. back before anyone was doing that <laughs> stuff since, you know, when I came to America and I started touring, you know, doing doing work with the rock and roll bands, good foods have become harder to obtain. But so now the key for me is moderation. You know, I'll have oats, you know. I'm lucky my wife is just as into the health foods as I am. Right, so is mine. It helps. But, you know, I'm not going to be as strict as I used to be, but absolutely. I mean, we know that what we put into our mouths is, is so important. I, I'm, I'm a believer in supplements. I've always taken them. People say, well, you know, you just end up, you know, peeing it out. And I say, well, you know, my feeling is that the worst I can have out of it is expensive urine. That's right. And you can recycle that as well. Yeah, and, you know, but if you're filling <laughs> that barrel, I, you know, call it with, with good stuff, whatever I'm lacking hopefully is taken up with the supplements I take. That's how it works. Yeah, and it's, so it's good insurance. So, so. it's high, you basically uh, high protein as well. Yeah, high protein diet. And low carb complex carbs yeah that's i'm all into the you know very low glycemic index foods that's why i like the oats you know with a few strawberries a few berries and yes, things like that exactly um it's it's interesting because when i first read the sugar busters book you know it, it kind of made a lot of sense because in australia you're brought up like here with meat and potatoes and everything yeah now you know i tried the this whole getting into this high the high glycemic index foods and low glycemic index foods and I looked at what are, what are a couple of major foods that I have every day that I could cut out to really to try it out. And I cut out bread and I cut out potatoes. Right. Well, I was around, I did a movie, you know, I wanted to see if I could get a lot leaner for this particular role. And I went from like 198 down to 181 in a matter of five weeks. Yeah, just cutting and that the out. The only variable was that. And I thought, wow, what a powerful indicator that is of how important it is to look at those fast or slow burning foods you know right and for energy you know again oats being you know not everybody should know you don't want those instant oats you want the ones you've got to cook for a while yeah the, yeah the quaker oats and everything else yeah quaker oats and i have those and i don't even think about food until lunchtime it gives me incredible amounts of energy because as you know it's like putting logs on a fire as opposed to kindling wood. it's slow burning exactly yeah it definitely works mm -hmm. i like to eat that way i make sure i get my protein at least three four times a day uh, I train six days a week still. My legs are shot because I had torn both quads right. in 2001, but I can still train them. I just can't squat, squat anymore. And there's certain things in the ring I can't do anymore, and I won't do because you know how it gets as you get older, there's things your body, you think you can do mentally. 
and your body doesn't want to go, and then something breaks, and then my wife says, okay, that's it, you're done. Yeah, but I always ask myself, do I really need to do this now? Exactly, you know, It's yeah. like high kicking and all that, uh, you know. I can still kind of do it, but I think, well, you, you know, I to. try and keep the skills up to a certain level. But if you're not competing, you're not winning tons of money by doing that particular exercise, then, hey, moderation is fine. So, moderation you know, to anything. Yeah, you come to terms with where you're at. Yeah, I still remember uh, Betty Davis's favorite saying that growing old is not for wimps. I remember that saying very well. It's not, right? You know, when suddenly I had rotator cuff surgery not that long ago from when I started grappling and, you know, a little bit of back. But overall, I've been pretty blessed, you know. And I think part of the blessing is having great instructors Yeah. that didn't let me hyperextend joints on a punch and exactly. all those sort of things. Same with the kicking. So my knees are pretty good. All these are pretty good. So considering being at it since 11, I'm like, uh, I'm fine with it, you know. You've worked with a lot of big names in martial arts. You've worked with Chuck Norris plenty of times. You mm -hmm. guys are good friends. Mm -hmm. You worked with Jackie Chan. Yep. Done uh, three movies with Jackie. Yeah, I love his movies. Yeah, he's really good. Name a few other people that you've been with, as far as names like that. Well, people probably know of Cynthia Rothrock. Of course, we yeah. did. Uh, we probably we did at least eight movies together. Some in Hong Kong, some here. And as I said, I was just with Cynthia today because we're trying to get Raging on a three up. You know, a couple little projects and another one called Downward Facing Dog. But it was great just to, to re you know reconnect with Cynthia and look at the idea of oh, doing sure. something after all this time. Uh, Michael Dudikoff. I did know, a movie with him. Michael, and I saw your picture with him. Michael's a really nice guy. We did a movie for uh, Fred Ray was a director. Do you know Fred? No. Fred Olin Ray. He, does a, he used to do a lot of action films with Don Wilson. All right. And Michael did one, and I came on, and we had a fight scene, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, no, Michael, Michael's great. The first one with Michael was American Ninja. Right. And, uh, you know, in the Philippines. And we did a couple of movies after that. And so uh, who else is there? You know, of course, you know, as you mentioned, Bob Wall, um, Jackie, Sammo Hong. As you, I, you know Sammo? Sammo directed yeah. a lot of Jackie's movies. He, to me, is still the most incredible martial artist action director that I've ever worked with. I mean... Jackie used to say about Samo, he, he looks like a monkey, but he uh, he looks like an elephant, but he moves like a monkey. That's funny. Which is a real compliment, because when you work with Samo, you look at him. I remember the first movie I did with Samo, he said, okay, you're going to swing a chair at my feet. He's on a table, I'm going to do a backflip and land on my feet. And I'm looking at Samo, I'm going, looking for the stunt double. Sure enough, yeah. he did like yeah. 30 times in a row. And yeah. that was the beginning of my fascination with Samo and his abilities. You can do it? Yeah. Now, action films, the ones you've done in Hong Kong, and compared to what we do here, is there a big difference? Yeah, there's a huge difference. There is, isn't there? Now, having said that, I haven't been to Hong Kong for a while now, but when I did them, first of all, there was no script. Mm -hmm. They literally made the script up as they went day by day. Just like we're doing here. Like we're doing here. <laughs> and so, and, and whatever there was written down, it was either in Cantonese or Mandarin. Yeah. So you would basically imitate what Samo or whoever was directing wanted. Like when I did uh, Jackie's film City Hunter, uh, a director named Wong Jing was the director. I'd go in for makeup. He'd be on a, like a little rollout pool lounge and he'd be giggling away because he's just writing that page oh, for the crazy. day, you know. That's crazy. And whoever would direct it. And basically you had to just say something along the lines of however long... The, the the section would be and then they would dub it with right. like Mandarin or Cantonese right. or whatever. The other big difference is the action. What Jackie realized is that the kids don't want to go and see him do drama and talk. Right. A little different now, you know, but back then they knew that the money ticket was the fights. Right. So everything was put into the fights. You do maybe a, a wide shot of dialogue, et cetera, et cetera, but every bit of time. The first um, fight I did with Sam Hong took three and a half weeks to shoot. City Hunter with Jackie was six and a half weeks to God, shoot. That's a long time for and a fight. I'm talking 18 hours a day, seven days a week on the set. That's a, a workout.